talk about writing and updating the investigator's brochure. And I love working on IBs. It's one of my favorite documents to work on because they're very scientific. And so it really, for me, sort of really keeps my brain going. So I really enjoy that. So let's talk about what we're going to cover today. We're going to identify the people who contribute to the investigator's brochure itself. We're going to talk about timing of generating your IB, the requirements that are presented to you in the ICH GCP E6 guidance, how to implement these requirements. I will teach you best, best practices, but you may find that there are other practices that you use as well, so we can talk about those if you like. We'll talk a little bit about a researching a lit, uh, lit review for the background section, which is often used in other documents. We'll talk about a target product pro profile. I don't know if you're familiar with those, but we can talk about that. It's, it's kind of an interesting document that gets generated by regulatory. A draft package insert as well, and how these fit in with your investigator's brochure. One of the most important things about investigator's brochure is the IB summary for the physician. So we'll talk about that in a little bit of detail as well. And then at the end, we'll talk about when the IB should be updated, who updates it, and all the different things that are affected by these updates and vice versa. Okay, so let's talk about goals when writing the investigator's brochure. And these goals are no different than any other regulatory documents that you work with. Pretty much they're all the same. You want it to be concise. You want it to be as simple as possible, which is very difficult sometimes with this document because it's very highly technical. You want everything that's presented to be objective as well as balanced and non-promotional in form. This is especially true of your investigator brochure because of its use. Its use is basically your label or package insert up until the time the drug is launched. So it's very important that it be very, very non-promotional. However, it should really represent your best work. If you think about it, it's basically everything you know about your drug from its inception up until you apply for a marketing application. And what it primarily does is enable a potential investigator to understand the compound and make an unbiased assessment of whether or not they want to actually enroll people in the clinical trial. So you really want to give all of the information that you can that will help someone to make a good unbiased decision. Your audience is the same as many of the other regulatory documents that we write. You have your internal reviewers, as always, as well as internal collaborators. Your investigators are your primary end users, as well as the study personnel at the site. There are also key opinion leaders that may look at your IB or have some input into it. IRBs will review this oftentimes when they are reviewing your protocol for review. And obviously, regulatory agencies see this as part of your dossier when you provide all of the information that's necessary for review of protocols as well as for your marketing applications. So everybody that's looking at this document, just like most of our other documents, has a very unique perspective, and they come from very different backgrounds. So the key to writing any regulatory document is to have the same takeaway by anybody who reads it. So that is always our goal as medical writers, to know our audience and be able to write a document that everyone can walk away with the same understanding. So for, from a regulatory perspective, what you want to do with your investigator brochure is communicate and justify the following, a good perspective of the disease itself, the standard of care that is currently in use if there is one, what's going on with other drugs in the class, and in particular, how does that pertain to the drug you're developing or the compound you're developing, why the starting dose makes sense. You know, very early on, especially if this is early on in phase one in the beginning of the process, you really have to justify why it's safe to use the dose or dosage regimens that you are starting with and probably escalating to, why it makes sense and why it's safe. So we have to show a known safety profile and how safety will be monitored in human subjects. So this is what the regulators are really concerned about. What are investigators and site personnel concerned about? Well, we want to communicate to them relevant safety information so they know the risks and benefits to any subjects that they're going to enroll into the study, how the drug is administered, what the storage conditions are, and what the rationale for use is in the clinical study or studies that they may be participating in. It's particularly important for them to understand all of these things because this is part of the process that they're going to be undergoing while they're enrolling subjects and doing study conduct. Mm -hmm.